In attendance this evening are Supervisors Fisher, Aguizio, Cassiola, Savavic, and Fleer. In addition, Township Manager Don Genuso, Jack King, Director of Planning and Assistant Township Manager, Sean Bukovinsky, Chief of Police, Engineer Dan Dizeroth of Gateway Engineers, and Township Solicitor Gretchen Moore. Before we begin this evening, I'd like to announce that we held an executive session on April 22nd. It was a conference call. We discussed attorney-client privileged information, specifically litigation. Citizens comments, comments will be taken at this time for any item to be voted on by the board that appears on the agenda. General township comments or questions will be addressed after the Board of Supervisors discussion of old business. Please step to the microphone and state your name and address for the record. Uh, Tom Cranin, uh, I was almost going to say with the company I retired from. <laughs> uh, uh, I want to talk about the um, the Rosewood uh, Rosewood Park gate and the lack of it. And uh, yeah. hey, uh, I can't, Mr. Cronin. Please address the board and speak into the microphone because we can't hear you. Uh, there was a traffic study done. Three stop signs. I, I don't know what you mean, in lieu of. There was no traffic. Uh, 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 we got word that there was a traffic study done. No. I'm not sure where you. Don? Uh, yeah, I was under the impression well, our engineer did an evaluation of the intersection. Right, there wasn't we, a full. We evaluated the intersection there wasn't based a full upon warrants. Yes. Okay. So, so, in other words, we're doing we're putting signs in without doing a traffic study. No, we, we evaluated the study. There's basic warrants that are required for a stop sign. And okay. the the intersection of Casilla, as Casilla approaches Rosewood, is a stop sign is warranted there. Wait, is that where at now? At the intersection of Casilla and Rosewood. Uh, that's coming, down. coming down. Here. Right. We're saying you're you're saying three stop signs though. Right. The recommendation though is for a three-way sign. Okay. Um, are you aware that there is um, uh, on-street parking? Yes. Still the drive and Rose Drive. Yes. Are you aware that um, uh, at that intersection, oftentimes there's cars parked on that intersection where a car coming up the hill may have to cross over into the oncoming lane to get through. Mr. Cronin, are you in favor or opposed to the three-way stop sign? Yeah, no. I'm, well, you're, I'm, you're, I'm stating the, the case. Please. We are aware of the situation. We are aware of the traffic flow. We are aware of the on-street parking. Don told us that there We're was not, a Ms. traffic study. Okay, well, Mr. G there was an evaluation. It's fine. There was an evaluation, so go ahead, continue. Okay, so uh, you're aware that there's on-street parking and that oftentimes you have to cross over. Where is that stop sign gonna be located in lieu of cars parked along the street? And is it gonna be visible? That would be the intent. Sure. Okay, that's the intent, but right. will it be visible? Well, if there's we, cars parked. Mr. Cronin, I mean, I'm sure you're fairly aware you can't park in front of a stop sign so even though there's on-street parking there if there's okay. a stop sign placed somebody couldn't park directly no, next I, to the I, stop sign I'm certainly not aware of that so uh, uh, you don't have to chastise me for I being wasn't unaware. I wasn't trying to I was trying to make sure because you're saying would cars be able to see coming I, around I'm making the case for no stop signs there and we're, the reason we're putting stop signs there is for failure to close Close off. You voted to close off that uh, that throughway, and you uh, you're allowing it to be open. And let's remedy that situation. And remedy in favor of the residents. Okay. So to me, they're separate issues, because no, it's the same issue. there's still traffic coming down, regardless of regardless of whether or not. Um, that gate is open or closed because there are residents that would live beyond the stop sign, correct? 
Say that again, please. There are residents that would live beyond the stop sign regardless of whether the gates open or closed and have uh, to come down. It. Yes. Yes. So we were made aware by residents, not because of the gate that's being closed, but we were made aware by residents that there have been quite a few over the years near misses for people T-boning each other. Yes. And that is the reason for the stop sign. If you want to discuss the gate, that's a separate issue. And we're happy to have that discussion. No, they're, they're, they're the same issue because for the lack of a gate, we need to stop Can you by. step to the microphone so it can be recorded? Thank you. For the lack of a gate, uh, we need the stop signs. So that's the issue here. So they are absolutely together. Are they not? Not in my opinion, no. Not in your opinion. So having look at the traffic study there, you'll see uh, 19, uh, 19 hours and uh, uh, 19.15 hours of study over uh, five days. Uh, 150 where did this where did this come from I just our residents up there it's it, you see it's a traffic observation so that that I know I'm just I can read that but I'm just saying ma Thanks. excuse me can you not talk during the meeting please can you provide um, one of these to Dan no give one of these to Dan mr. Cronin Mr. Cronin, our engineer did a traffic evaluation. While I appreciate the effort of the residents, I also understand your point, which your point is that if the gate is closed, which is what you're advocating for, in your opinion, a, a stop sign is not warranted. We understand that, but we heard from other residents in, in that area that that is not the case, which is why we asked our township engineer to go out and take a look at it. So, so I understand what you are saying, and I understand that you are coming and saying that you represent the residents that live in that area. I don't represent all the residents. I some of the residents. Yeah. You are coming and saying you represent some of the residents. Other residents feel differently. So we, as a board, are just trying to make sure that we, we evaluate every situation and consider everybody's. We understand you want the gate closed, and you want the gate to remain closed. That will be addressed. Yeah, we, we submitted uh, a couple meetings ago uh, uh, a petition indicating that most of the people up there wanted to close. Right. I understand that. Okay. We saw it. So, 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 so it's, it's opened against the majority of the uh, residents' will. And honestly, against, I don't say against our will, but a majority of this board wants the gate, wanted the gate closed as well. But as I explained to you previously and in previous meetings, we can't go up there and close and, and have somebody make sure the gate is closed. So we are working with the homeowner. Our township engineer is working with the homeowner to try to come to agreement. We have been given, we as a board have been given multiple scenarios that the property owner has requested. We will address that. It will be talked about this evening. Okay. We, we understand, like we understand that you don't believe a stop sign is warranted. We also understand that you believe that the gate should remain closed. All yeah, I'm asking is that yeah. you give us that opportunity. So you, you see that on, on the total vehicles in 19 hours, 157. I understand. And if the gate were closed, it would be zero. So that 157 cars are going down to the intersection of Burnside Road and Rose Lane, where there is always, that's a bad intersection, and so all we're doing is loading up another bad intersection. And you're making three stop signs up there where now who's going to monitor that, Chief? That, you know, that's, that's another situation, isn't it? We understand. So there's going to be complaints saying these people are blowing through the stop signs. And you'll have another. Yet in 70 years when that plan was developed, in 70 years, there was no issues at that intersection. There might have been an accident or two up there, but there is at every intersection over 70 years. Yes, yeah, so I think the issue is not the stop signs, it's the closure. That should be number one. Second, if, if it's going to take three or five months to close it, then maybe a stop sign on Rose Avenue as it comes out of Cannonsville to slow that traffic down. Coming up the hill, it's impossible. 
because coming up the hill, I have to cross over into the oncoming lane to take my left onto Casilla. And, you know, is a car coming? Because there's a bend in the road there where it's not visible. And I could show you that. Can I pass these up? Yes, as long as it relates to the stop sign. The gate issue would have to be addressed after, at the end. Right there. And page two. We'll address that. That's what I'm uh, promoting. That gate there. That type of. Is this, is this the, wait, stop. Is this about the gate? So you can, if it's about the gate, I'm going to, because it's not an agenda no, item. About the stop sign. But did you just say this a gate? About the stop sign. Okay. Is that rain? No. It's all about the stop sign. Okay. And, and why I'm against it. <sighs> It's showing the intersection there. On, on that, it's showing uh, the intersection of uh, uh, Rosington Hill and further up. You'll see the property I have indicated, uh, 122 Rose Avenue. And uh, they own that lot. Mr. Cronin, th you're, this is specifically talking about the gate. I'm going to ask I'm you. I, no, you're stop talking about the stop sign. That's what this is. Is this not? It says Rose Avenue barrier proposal. So is yeah. this not about the gate? This is to eliminate the need of the stop sign. Because I'm against the stop sign. I don't we care. understand. You to vote against the stop sign. We, we totally so, understand no. that. I'm just trying to, we've had complaints from people, if I'm being honest, that residents are coming up and bringing up items that are not on the agenda. So I'm trying to make sure this is, that okay. this, the gate, I, I want to hear what you have to say about the gate. I do. <laughs> I want to. Listening. I want to hear what you have to say about the gate, but the gate is not an agenda item tonight. So if you want to, we understand it's, that you're opposed to the st of, of uh, a stop sign. We understand that. No, you don't understand that. Because you keep shutting me down when I talk about the other possibilities. You're not being objective. Are you? I am, Mr. So, okay. So there was no traffic study done. But then, the, then uh, how, how was it, how did three come about? How did three stop signs come about? Stan, do you want to? So the, there, the stop sign is not warranted in the direction along Rose Avenue, uh, but it is warranted on Kinsilla. Uh But a lot of times, uh, Municipalities, you can you can put in a stop sign, and a lot of times they're put in just for even though they don't meet warrants, you can still put them in. You can't enforce them. That's the issue. Okay. So it doesn't prevent people from doing it. They do it all the time. We just felt that based upon what we saw there, that if you if you try to put a stop sign coming out of Cannonsburg, if you put one, That's where we want to slow them down. Sure, I understand that. But if you if you put if you put one there you create a situation if you don't put one on the other side because the opposing movement doesn't have to stop. Nobody's going to be jealous. I, I understand. I, I'm just, I, I have a traffic engineer in the house. I reviewed this with him. Yeah. That's what he, he recommended. He said if you're going to put it on the side coming out of Cannesburg, you need to put it on the side coming up also. You have to get three people to stop there. And I can't hear you. You can't, you can't, I'm sorry. That's you okay. can't put, you, you can't leave, make two people stop and the third one come unopposed. We do that what? down below. Well, it, it's not recommended. That's what not what we recommend. And and it's the same situation. <laughs> I understand. Well, that, that. That's why it's open. That's why it's open at Rose and Burnside. Yeah. Coming down the hill, there's no stop sign for Rose Avenue where it meets Burnside. You know why? Because it's on a hill. Sometimes you can't stop. There's lots of stop signs on hills. Is that your answer? That's it. That's I don't know what to say. Like I, I, I'm, I don't know. So, I don't so know how. That's that's not at all what I'm saying, Mr. Cronin. I'm. That's, that's 
That's I'm telling you, like, we can't not put a stop sign when there's a safety issue because it's on a hill and so sometime there may be ice and somebody can't stop. Are you also aware, did you see the last columns of pedestrians use that street as well? School kids come from uh, the Apple Hill uh, plan from Lucia and Rose Drive. They walk down uh, Rose Lane uh, uh, to Burnside Road to catch their school bus down there. So now we've got a mixture of vehicles uh, in that, in, in, in 19 in so, so hours, we had 157 vehicles and 45 uh, people, 24 of them children. That's, that's in six, in six days, you had that many vehicles. I, I'm sorry. In six days. In six it days, comes out to, hours. it comes to an average of about 20 cars a day. That's right. It's not, it, no, no, it doesn't. As you've seen, you've seen the hours in those six days. Summer in the morning, summer in the afternoon. They're not all in company. It's it's when we could watch. So it's not it's not like that's why it's an observation. It's not a study. I agree with that. It's it's nothing scientific. And read the notes. And and do and you think it, in that time nobody was watching full time? Do you think if that gate's down, it's going to stop the kids? I, I I'm sorry, I'm having difficulty. If the gate's down, is it going to stop the kids? They're going to walk around it. They're still going to walk here. Uh, yeah, they certainly have to walk here because that's where their bus is. Yeah. I, I, I agree. They're going to they're walk here. And, and, but, but those 157 cars wouldn't be coming down there if the roads were closed. And the stop, necessity to put up a stop sign would be negated because those kids would be walking down there and there's like 25 houses up there in that plant. And, and that's now there's 400 in Apple Hill across across the border now. Mr. Kernan, I've said it. No, I've said it. We understand. We support I'm having. The situation. I, uh, and that, uh, they're tied together. Don't you understand? I understand that you're. I, agree with you that I understand one, that uh, one belongs to the other. What caused the necessity for the stop sign was the lack of a gate. No. Would you agree? No. What caused it? Uh, please tell we, me. I, I said earlier, we receive complaints from residents who live at those intersections that regardless of when the gate is open or closed, there have been numerous near accidents because of people, there isn't a stop sign there. It, I specifically asked that question to those residents is it because the gate is open and the response and it's somebody who's very well known and very well respected in the community? The answer is no. So but I. One person said that. No. And when I gave you a petition with names on it, would you name that person? I'm sorry. Would you name the person that you said this well, well respected person? I am sure he would be. He or she would be fine with me but telling. They may, they may sign. They may have signed the, the petition to close that gate. They did not. Good. There were three people that not because, not because. So one person out of 19 houses, and you're worried about one person. No, it was not one person. Really? Okay, you're going to have to well. It was not one person. It's they. two persons. There's 25 houses. I don't care. You got a petition to 19 residents signed. Because they said they were worried you are time out time out time out time out you are getting upset when i've tried to tell you over and over and over again the board supports your position to close the gate i'm just you're all yelling it you're all yelling over each other no, you're, at me. you're cor constantly correcting me for bringing up the gate when that's involved in this project we understand your position is a stop sign really going to inconvenience you that much here's the, here's the situation for 70 years, there was a stop sign. I understand that. But is it going to inconvenience you that much to stop for a minute? I'm just saying in, uh, there was no necessity for it until that gate was open. But would it be an inconvenience? Uh, uh, Ron, no. To be fair, the request for the stop sign was, was brought to our attention last fall. So okay. it has nothing to do with the gate being opened or closed. Okay. Dan, 
And then we gave you a petition of all the others. So he has more weight than all the rest of it. Is that it? No. That, what is it then? We take into consideration whether it's one resident or 50 residents, people's concerns. We asked our township engineer to evaluate it. If he would have come back and said to us that he didn't think that they should go there, then we would have respected that opinion. If he come, came back to us and said that yes, they can go there, then we respect that opinion. In the same way we respected your opinion, Mr. Cronin, when, we, when we've been trying to keep this gate closed. So we consider whether you are one person or a hundred people, every resident deserves to have their concerns addressed. Okay, so we put the three stop signs there. Let's say it's, it's done. Is that gonna solve the problem? It's not, do it's not done. We haven't even voted on it yet. Okay, so let's, let's uh, presume that you do. And you, you put the three stop signs in there. That's not gonna change anything on here. In, in fact, it might, might enhance that. Because as we go month to month, you know, if, if you voted to close that again, or if they, uh, the residents of uh, 122 Rose agreed to a scenario you would vote it on the next month. And then it might take another month or two to, to, uh, to proceed with the closure of it. So, so it, it's every, every time you don't address that directly, it's been month after month after month. We have, as I said before, we have multiple scenarios to consider. Some of which I think the board would, and I can't speak for everyone, doesn't make sense and some of which I think make some sense but unfortunately we have to follow the legal process and make sure that we're not trampling on the rights of that property owner so I'm sorry that it's not moving as quickly as you would like but we are actively working on it and we as a majority of this board do want that connection not to be I ask what you're handing out now. This is another uh, handout. This is the uh, uh, proposed. It's the gate again. Okay, so we're going to, members of the board, I'm going to ask that you hang on to these. We're going to move on and we'll talk about the gate at the end of the meeting so that we can move on. Come on. He you skipped, skipped Ron. Ron. He always does. He did last time. I looked right over the side. All right. You get the color. And we'll oh, ask man. that you be seated, and we will bring this back up at the end of the meeting. Thank you. So you. Okay, I didn't. The paper that I gave you. This, that's really, you're welcome to have it back, but that is related to the gate again. Okay, then we'll deal with that after. That. Yep. Thank you. Okay. Is that is that all related to the stop sign? With that. Is that all related to the stop sign? Now you're, yeah, you just kicked me out. Now you went. <laughs> I'm just making sure that you got everything. I didn't kick you out related to the stop sign. Every time I mention the, uh, the, uh, the gate, you interrupt. Um, I'm oh, sorry, I apologize. Um, just quickly, if you want to review the announcements, talk, Touch a Truck will be held Saturday, May 15, 2021, from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Information will be posted on the Township website. The Blood Drive is Saturday, May 15th, from 8.30 to 1, sponsored by the Cecil Volunteer Fire Company, number 3. The Cecil Township Historical Society is actually gonna be meeting for the first time since, what do we say, Jack, February? Um, on Wednesday, May 19th, 2021 at 7 p.m. in the Cecil Township Municipal Building. Everyone entering the building will be required to wear a properly fitting face mask and contactless temperature scans will be taken. Jordan Tax Service will be at the Township Municipal Building on Wednesday, May 19th from nine to noon, Monday, May 24th from one to four, and Friday, May 28th from nine to noon. The municipal offices will be closed on Monday, May 31st in observance of the Memorial Day holiday. Normal business hours will resume 8 a.m. on Tuesday, June 1st. Resolutions 82-2021. Consider application 2021-0005 for the 
two, for 275 technology drive parking addition site plan contingent upon addressing the township engineer's letter dated April 14, 2021. Location 275 technology drive, Cannonsburg, SD Special Development Zoning District, applicant 275 Tech Fee LLC. The Planning Commission recommended approval with a contingency on April 15, 2021. What was the contingency? Uh, just contingent upon my letter. Yeah, okay. Uh, so this is, is anybody here? All right, there's some, there's a, re there's a representative here uh, from the engineer's office related to the plan. <laughs> Uh, but this is trying to get where go to get you to the right plan. All right, I got it. Just trying to get to the, oh, here we go, okay. So this is, um, this is a new parking area for 275 Technology Drive. Uh, just that the, um, we believe the current owner wants to bring the parking lot more up to standard to have more spaces there. Uh, we reviewed the plan, uh, they've, Provided the information required, uh, they're going to have stormwater management in the form of underground tanks here that you can see on the site. And uh, they have a landscaping plan. Uh, the plan before they brought it to the Planning Commission, I made sure that they got SPOA approval first before they came to the board. So this does have SPOA approval. Uh, so um, there's some, a little bit of lighting required. Uh, you can see on this picture, this is the existing building here. This is just an open space area adjacent to the building. So um, it's, it's all in order. Um, they did provide some additional information today. I just didn't get a chance to respond fully. So as, it, as the agenda item is written, uh, I think that that's appropriate. And the applicants here, if the board has any questions. Hey, Dan. Oh, could you in the future add the name of the business? I mean, we know what 275 technology, but nobody else reading this would know what it is. Yeah, same thing on the, the one for PDV uh, properties on release of um, private improvements. So just add the name of the business, like whether it's... Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's the... That's the uh, you always stand up and end up telling yeah. us, usually, but... Uh, I understood. Okay. This one, I'm not sure what the business is. I think it's just a vacant building. I'm not sure who the tenant is in there now. Dan, I, w I as well would like to hear of the uh, contingency or what was on the letter. And were those conditions met? Uh, yeah, there was some. Um, they had to. Prov they had to provide some revised information to meet the requirements of our site plan, Eric. And then I typically put in there that a developer's agreement is required, and a cost estimate has to be submitted so that they bond uh, this improvement. So that's really what we're down to. Those those particular items. Two issues. Yes. And then today you said there were more issues that you didn't respond to. What are they? Well, they, they had addressed the previous technical comments that I had uh, given them related to the plan. That's okay. I have it. Uh, so we, the, um, they had the show. Uh, The issues from the Planning Commission were really just down to uh, erosion and sedimentation control plan, which they provided. Uh, they had to show some cut and fill quantities. They had to show the property setbacks, and uh, they needed to put some existing conditions information on. And like I said, they addressed the majority 
of those comments, the only comments remaining are those related to the developer's agreement and the cost estimate, which are typically provided afterwards. I'd like to make a motion to approve this. Second. It's been moved and seconded. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Passes 5-0. 83-2021, consider application 2021-0006 for the Traditions of America Phases 6 and 7 subdivision plan, contingent upon addressing comments from the Township Engineer's letter dated April 14, 2021. Location, Hahn Road, Cannonsburg, R2, Medium Density Residential Zoning District, applicant TOA, Cecil LLC. The Planning Commission recommended approval with the contingency on April 15, 2021. Good evening, Grant Sharing with PB, representing Traditions of America. Um, here tonight requesting final approval for phase six and seven. So just as a quick recap, uh, this is the overall master plan for the South Point site. Phase six and seven are located in the rear. Phase six is in green. Phase seven is in red. There are 33 units in phase six and there are 39 units in phase seven. Just a blow up of the area in case there are any specific questions about these phases. Um, it, I think I heard a letter from April. Uh, we received the May 3rd letter that has cleaned up many of those comments uh, within the previous letter. And I believe that the remaining comments are administrative items similar to what Dan had mentioned on the previous application. Um, so all these comments will be addressed. Uh, we'll submit the cost estimate. We'll execute the developer's agreement. Uh, and take care of all those remaining items. So since the last time you guys have seen this plan, nothing um, has changed. I did have a quick question. I know that I know some people who had purchased homes up there and they, it was delayed. Have have there been any occupancy permits issued? There there have been. And are people actually residing in, in there those are. homes? Okay. There are. There's been certain points where we've been turning over sanitary sewer and just making sure that we get all the as-builts correct per CTMA's requirements, okay. getting easements in place, things of that that might have hold things up. It was like a temporary that. delay. Okay. Thank you. I still say that I said several times, I want to see overflow parking. Last time we had that conversation, we had come back and we had added parking spaces. Uh, there were two locations where the spaces were added. Well, you're going to have 70, almost 70 units here. You have no overflow. We do. In six and seven? Correct. There is there's parking spaces here it and here. Show them. It shows through, grass. through here, there are no locations through here along the streetscape. Correct. And I've, I've been over there. There's a lot of cars on the street. There's a lot of construction activity. <laughs> I think I know the difference between construction and I'll still say it should be overflow parking. Noted. Is there a motion to approve? I'd, I had more discussion or just I'd like Sorry. the board to consider as well. I, I just don't like hearing this cleaned up many of the issues and stuff like that. It looks like the letter went out on the 14th and, and 15th was a, a meeting for the planning hearing board. And uh, I don't think we ought to be putting the planning commission or Dan through hoops. Uh, so we should we should be looking at stuff like that and maybe push it back another month for any situation. Eric, if if uh, if a plan uh, we we just denied a plan last month that didn't comply. Well, it wouldn't. Yeah, it yeah. wouldn't come. So here. so what what the planning commission generally the, the cycle that that happens is that that we get the letters out, the planning commission reviews it, they decide whether there's enough issues or not. And generally, most of the time, they're, they're minor issues that the engineer can address. Uh, I believe there's a pretty quick turnaround to the Board of Supervisors meeting this month. So people were running a little bit late with Easter and everything else. So we, we try to afford people the, the, you know, the most amount of time that they can. Grant th came through and got everything that he needed to get before the meeting tonight. I'm satisfied that the plan is technically compliant with our ordinance. And we have our just our typicals, our typical things that we put in a letter, so that when 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 the plan is approved, that we're making sure that the things like the developers agreement, the the cost estimate, the bonding, is all in there. In the case of this uh, being a PRD, there were conditions of the PRD, 
which we like to state that the PRD conditions are carried through to this phase of the development. And uh, they also have to do a legal agreement for the stormwater facility, uh, which they're building on site. And uh, really, that's it. So technically, we should be referencing that letter again to make certain that that's done? Yeah, in I, our... I would just reference it based, all those same comments were in my April letter, but I have a, date, a letter dated today, May 3rd. And I have a question. Uh, you circled some areas, you pointed to some areas that have uh, the, the off-street parking. Can you, do you have a tighter view of that? I mean, it's hard to see anything in there with uh, that size of the view. Um, I do not have anything within this pre presentation that zooms into the area, but there are, in this location, there are, there are six parking spaces, parallel parking spaces located ac across the, up, across this portion of the street. Um, previously, when the comment came up with the last phases of approval, we also added parking spaces to this area here. There were three here before, and I believe there's a total of nine in that location. And you pointed to someone that across your right in there. Yes, correct. Um, there are there are three parking spaces in this location as well. And the, and the back the, bend, that back bend you pointed to is that what you were? I was just saying that right there. Um, as Mr. Fleer was saying that there there are no spaces along this loop. That little stub out there, what, there's a vacant area right right there. What what will that be used for? Right now, that is used as a temporary cul-de-sac. That will be a temporary cul-de-sac until the adjacent property develops, and then it will be connected through. Is that a lot right there? It is not. What well, could it be uh, parking there? I believe it could be. Well, that's part of this draw, this phase, though. It is part of this phase. Did you commit to that right in there? I think we could fit maybe three spaces within there. Okay. Are you asking that be added those three yes, spaces? Yes. Yeah. He said you'd do it. So add the May third letter as well. I would agree with Ron. These are there's a lot of homes there, and uh, you have company visits or a, a party going on, and yeah, I don't know where my house, my yard fills up. <laughs> but well, uh, to be fair though, you can. There's no on street parking like on an everyday basis, but at, as in most neighborhoods, if you're having people over, you can temporarily on street park for. And there's a phone number that you can call Cecil Police to let them know, hey, I'm having my daughter's, I don't know, first communion. But those and driveways are pretty close. It'd be they hard are. to even find. Uh, is park, there enough street? room between driveways to park cars or no? Probably at least one. There, I mean, there's enough spaces, yeah. There, there's enough distance between, yes, that a car could fit on street if need be. So if you're comfortable, if we add those three, are you comfortable approving it moving forward? Yes. Pending the May 3rd letter. Eric? Okay, do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Uh, aye. aye. No. Four, one. Carol, please make sure that the minutes reflect the, that it includes contingent upon the May 3rd letter and those three additional parking spaces. Thank you. 84, 2021. Consider the full reset. Full release of financial security posted for the installation of private improvements for PDV Properties Corporation in the amount of $8,896.80 as recommended by the township engineer. Yeah, this is the uh, uh, Winkles Pit Stop, uh, which is the uh, beer distributor that was put down next to the gas station along Route 50. Uh, we've been going back and forth with them related to the final plan. Uh, there was some parking that was put errantly in there that they've since striped out and marked not for parking. Uh, the concern was that uh, <coughs> with vehicles, the way they were parked in there, it was an unsafe condition. So they've uh, re redone the parking lot area and they put a sign up. So I'm comfortable with that. It's on an as-built plan. So uh, they're, they're due for their full release of the money. So move. Make the motion. It's been moved and seconded. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Passes 5 nothing. 
2021, consider the first release of financial security posted for the installation of public and private improvements for the sanctuary from $281,004.90 to $184,631.90, a total reduction of $96,373 as recommended by the Township Engineer. Yeah, this is just another release on the sanctuary development. They are paved up there, uh, and they're they're just doing final work to put in some of the utilities uh, after the pavement. Uh, we're looking at the work, and we agree that this is uh, this reduction is in order. Uh, there's still I, I don't let this go down to less than the maintenance bond amount, uh, so they're still well above that. The maintenance bond on this job would be. Uh, around 90, 96,000. So we still have 184,000 on them. Actually, 93,000 would be their maintenance bond. So this is in order uh, from our perspective, and we're right making the recommendation uh, to release the funds. I'll make a motion. Second. second. Moved and seconded. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Yeah, and while we're on that, Passes five you got the same problem going on over there as McConnell's. The, the entrance isn't wide enough. You know what I mean? How the apron goes out? Okay. I, think, I think we need to make him wider. Well, they haven't done their final wearing course, so we could get that done. Uh, yeah, it's just the same thing. The tractor trailers are right. running. Uh, um, I think make them wider. Right. Okay. The school bus would probably use both lanes too then, right? Yeah, but, there, but there's nobody. I don't think a school bus goes in McConnell's. It will, though. Hmm? It will. They will. Yeah. School bus up there. Yeah, um, maybe, maybe, maybe on some. Of the, uh, I mean, that, that's a good point, Ron. I mean, I don't, I don't know if our hair is a full, a full 24 feet there. It probably is pretty close to it. But uh, typically, when we widen, we'll, we'll widen on one side, like three foot out, and then create the right. radiuses a little bit more. So, good point. We should have had that discussion before the vote. Should you vote again to make sure that's included? Well, you'll still have another bite at the apple here. You're not giving everything away, and we'll ask that we'll request that they do that. We still hold, we're okay. still holding 90. 180,000. Yeah. 180. Thank you. Reduced. Oh, yeah, 184, yeah. Um, OK. 86 2021 consider approval of change order number one change order number two and application for payment number two and final for the work completed by current contracting inc for the cecil township park bridge replacement projects in the amount of seventeen thousand one hundred seventeen dollars and 38 cents is this it dan that's it they're done this is it they're they're complete i'll make a motion second Moved and seconded. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Passes 5 0. I'm actually going to ask the board to um, hang on to this motion 80, uh, number 87 for a minute. I want to have a brief executive session with our call center about it before we take up all the votes. If you guys are okay, we'll pause it till the end. Yeah, just table till the end of the meeting. Yeah, good. Good, Eric. Okay. Um, 88 2021 consider setting up a workshop meeting to discuss the public works building project and the repair of Kuma Road uh, would this be public or just us Dan. just with Dan okay yeah the uh, public works project uh, we're to the point where we need to bring it back to the board uh, there's a, a floor plan complete there's a site plan complete and before we press on any further I'd like the board's input and just review of this I think it's better to form it's a big project it's got a lot of a lot of twists and turns it can take but would like to put that in front of you and at the same time uh, I'd like to bring you some alternatives on Coomer Road that we've looked at I think it's important to consider for future planning of the township with that road and, and how we're going to approach it as opposed to just putting money and trying to fix a band-aid on a bad situation what's your availability for to have a meeting <coughs> Eric, Tom, Ron, Frank. Any time. Any we'll days better than others? I'm sorry, Eric. We'll make it work. Um, you want to set it up for Monday, May 17th? Does that work for you, Dan? Dan, does that work? Did we have a? Is that the hearing date? A hearing date. If we could do it the following week, yeah, it would be the better 24th. for me. The 24th. Yes, if you won't mind. That's fine. The 24th. My wife will. 
be much happier. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we did have a hearing that evening at 7. What day? On the 17th. We moved it. For there. what? May 17th was the, uh, I just read it in the email, but I just had hearing date listed, 7 o'clock. Oh, that's a, I know what you're talking about. That's a zoning hearing board meeting, or a zoning hearing board, board yeah. hearing. Um, that's not us. So okay. we could still meet. Um, separately, but we're going to move it to the 24th for Dan at 7, Dan. That's fine, sure. At 7 p.m. Non public informational yep. meeting. Yeah, non public okay. informational meeting. Okay. Um, 89 2021, consider playground surfacing material for the ADA swing in Cecil Park at an installed cost of 20688 from park play and park structures. So for those of you that, that is a, uh, we got a handicapped swing via a grant from Equitrans Midstream through Jason, State Rep Jason Ortitai um, last year. In order to have it installed, we need to add an extension to the current swing. Um, and so at, for those of you that have been to Cecil Park, there's a safe surface underneath all of, all of our playground equipment. We need to extend that safe surface and extend the arm of the swing. Um, unfortunately, it is pricey, but the price is what the price is. So that is what that is for. So I'll make a motion. I'll second it. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 And to be clear, that money comes out of um, the capital parks money that has been put aside. Um, 90 2021, consider installation of Corten guide rail at the, C at the Cecil Park parking lot at a cost of $6,500 to interstate enterprises. As a secondary to this, and this was my fault because um, Bill had asked it to be added and I didn't, he would also like approval to have that bridge that they installed over by the public works building to, to pay for $1,425 to steel city blasting for um, they're gonna blast it to get the paint off and then our guys are gonna repaint it. He said it's such a weight off of his shoulders to have the kids who, the summer help kids who drive the um, zero turns be able to cross that bridge instead of coming onto 50 to get to the park. So there's two separate items in this agenda item. It will be $6,500 for the Corten guide rail at Cecil Park parking lot and then it will also be $1,425 to have that bridge blasted. I'm making make a motion. Well, not paint. Our guys are going to paint it. The 1425 is just for the blasting. It's been moved. Is there a second? Second. second. Moved and seconded. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Passes 5 0. That, that was just one of the bridges? Both. So they moved one no, of the old one bridge. bridges. I mean, I, I mean, both items here. Yeah, yeah. both oh, but I meant that's just one they bridge. They moved one of the old bridges, Eric, that was pulled out of the park over to cross the creek right in front of where the public works building sits in front of the parking lot, and it just needs some work. So they can't blast it themselves. It just needs to be blasted. That's for one of them, though, is my point. Yeah. Right, yeah. We had another issue in McDonald, though. Or do we ever do anything on that? Uh, bridge that was shut down and we wanted to try and get walking traffic going across that. Do you recall that incident maybe three years ago, four years? That's one I tore down. Yeah, it may be. Huh? We were talking about maybe having a walking bridge or something. Would that other bridge work for that or? Where in They're the, gone. We don't yeah. have any extra ones left, right? No, we got rid of the other bridges. All right. so Let's keep that in mind left. for those people. Yeah, in the future. Something in mind for those people. 91 2021 consider paving of Cecil Park parking lot to be added to the annual paving program. Do we have a cost on that? That, that lot needs it bad. Yeah, yeah, that, that was, that'll just be it. Uh, Dan, you can correct me if I'm wrong. That'll just be at the unit price for the paving contract that we have uh, currently, correct? Okay. So that'll just be an add item to the, to the road program for this year. Okay, do I have a motion? Do we need to approve it with an amount up to? I don't think so. No, because the unit prices are unit already prices. established, and yes, you, just an approval of the, of the board is all that's necessary. It'll be what it is. Right. On Correct. The yardage. I'll make a motion. Second. Moved and seconded. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Passes 5 0. 92 2021. Consider authorizing the township manager to advertise for a laborer position in the public works department. This is a budgeted item for the public works. 
I'll make a motion. I'll second it. Moved and seconded. Second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Passes five zero. Consider the purchase, I'm sorry, 93 2021. Consider the purchase of two F 550 dump trucks for the 2022 model year. Due to national shortages, the equipment is not expected to arrive until September of 2022. Um, again, had a conversation with Bill this morning, and Dawn, jump in if I overspeak or misspeak. But um, basically, we're just putting our place in line at this point. They're, everything is so far behind that they're not even sure, he's not even sure we'll get it then, but we have to hold our space in line and it's also budgeted for so it's budgeted from this year mm -hmm. yeah, yes so. it what's the cost uh, I don't remember offhand. That's, that's something that's subject to change because of uh, the situation the auto uh, auto manufacturers are in we're not sure what the pricing would be we do know that we will get the, the best negotiated price uh, participating in coast excuse me, either the CoStar's contract or the Shaycock contract. Once that's finalized, we can bring back right. the price. It, the board will have to have a number. I'll place a number in front of the board for their approval. Yeah, this is basically just approving our spot in the line to that's get correct. one when we can get Sounds it. Sounds good. I'd, pre I'd like to see it come back because the public it would knows have exactly to. the cost. It has to. We have Thank to you. vote on the final cost. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Passes 5-0. 94 2021 consider a donation to the muse fireworks display scheduled for july 2nd 2021. What's good. Come out? It, did we give him money last year no because nobody no, covid I, didn't know if we had, I thought we had approved it we all we have every year in the past it was just uh, yeah i understand that yeah. but i thought we had approved it and had given him money no we only give it to him when he's actually okay. going to buy the fireworks what was the amount we gave two years ago do you recall Two thousand dollars, I believe. And this amount this year is planned. How much? You whatever say, you suggest. Uh, we still, uh, I suggest, give them two two thousand dollars. Agree. Puts on a tremendous show. One of the best in the yeah, area. Yeah, it's a good show. Agreed. It's good to see something normal coming back too. Consider a donation to the Muse Fireworks display scheduled for July second, twenty twenty, in the amount of two thousand dollars. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Passes five zero. 95 2021 consider appeal of south point golf course decision this was the discussion we had at the executive session i have a motion so moved i'll second moved and seconded all those well, in favor well, is this to go to supreme court yes moved and seconded all those in favor signify by saying aye aye, aye. 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 Uh, ron did you say aye yes or no i said yes okay eric yes sorry Five zero. Ninety six twenty twenty one. Consider authorizing the township manager to secure pricing and purchase a new phone system for the township municipal building. Um, go ahead, Don. Our phone system is. I think I explained in an email um, on its last leg. The reason for the what somewhat emergent um, agenda item is that we're not sure it'll make it till the next boarding board's vote. So. Um, Pricing is expected to come in anywhere above what bidding limits are required, but in no way will we have to go out for bid. So what I'm saying is pricing will probably come in between $12,000 to $20,000. I need three price quotes. So once I get those price quotes, I'll, of course, circulate those to the board. But time is of the essence because our system is, is fragile right now, and it's, um, it was down for, for days at a time. Why couldn't they all use cell phones? Were any of those line items on the budget? Don? Uh, no, it would have to come out of capital expenditures uh, for the build, for building maintenance. It was, it was, it's an unbudgeted, unanticipated expenditure. But we can't, if I'm understanding correctly, Don, we, there's a chance it could go down and then we couldn't get it back up, which yes. is not something we can chance. One so of the problems of our parts are obsolete, you know, and, and technology has been increasing at such a rapid pace in telecommunications that what we had uh, five, six years ago is, is nowhere near the systems that they're installing uh, today. So moved. I'll second. Moved and seconded. All those Discussion? Sure. I'm just surprised we didn't look into this uh, earlier or, or put it under last year's budget. It, we, How old is the system? Six years old. Okay. Just that comment. Okay. It's been moved and seconded. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 
97 2021 consider the board of supervisors regular monthly minutes from the monday april 5th 2021 cecil township board of supervisors regular monthly meeting moved second moved and seconded all those in favor signify by saying aye all right aye, aye. five zero 98 2021 consider the general fund invoices from april 1st through april 30th 2021 so moved Second. Moved and seconded. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Passes 5 0. Anyone have new business? Want to bring up? Yeah, under new business, I wanted to just bring up and thank uh, Jack and the Parks and Rec and our team here that put on an outstanding uh, fish derby. That was wonderful. So Ronnie was there. I was there. Uh, it was just great to see the kids tangling their lines with each other and uh, having a good time throwing the lure all the way across the other bank. They gave prizes and it was really nice. So uh, Range, I wanna thank them as well for donating the 1,500 for the fish that were stocked and another $400 for the food. That was outstanding, very neighborly thing to do. Yep. Well, the good thing was they made sure every kid caught a fish. Somebody would hook them and then let them roll down. And they got little medals to hang around her neck, which they thought they won the Olympics. You bet. And they gave away a lot of fishing poles. Yeah. It was, I, it was a really nice event. I heard that Jack was the burger meister. So he if was. you need a new burger, if you need a good burger, I heard Jack King's the guy to go to going forward. <laughs> we'll be waiting, Jack, before one meeting. We'll, we'll have you cook off. We'll have a little cook off. Um, sorry. Anybody else have new... New business. I'd like to say I want to thank the road department. They got our park in beautiful shape. Yeah, agreed. They finished up the bridges and everything. They did a very nice job. Awesome job, guys. There was one other comment that I received from a resident uh, up where the roundabout is by the National Cemetery of the Alleghenies. The comment was that I just wanted to present to the board. They wanted to, instead of just the stone mark or just that pile of stones that are there at the turnabout, they were talking of doing a fundraiser or something to put a military statue or something there. Uh, just to celebrate the fact that we have the National Cemetery of the Alleghenies in Cecil. You have to have the state there. So I just yeah. wanted to make we you all. Went, we'd have to get pen. You'd have to talk to Jason to get penned on a few of those. Okay. Well, I'm I just wanted to run it by the board yeah, and just that. let them know that that was, that was the idea. They were looking at uh, doing something that way. Yeah. Yep. Sounds good. Anybody else have new business? Um, yes, um, picking up a copy of our township news magazine today. Um, I was reading an article here. It says federal funding is on the way to help every township manage COVID-19 impacts. And you can get online and see what every uh, township municipality is going to receive throughout the state of Pennsylvania. And Cecil Township will receive $1,290,000, $1,290,000. And the plan delineates four broad uses for the funding, which must be spent by December 31st, 2024. And one of the things you can use it for is investments in water, sewer, and broadband infrastructure. And I think we should appropriate these monies to the infrastructure, maybe for our uh, public works building. Can we do that? I don't, we'd have to get, we'd have to look into that. It's not a bad idea, but we have to look into it, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, anything, good idea. Well, we can have Gretchen and Don look into that and then get back to you. Anything else, guys? Um, moving on to old business, I actually added both of these items. I don't know, I, we have had multiple um, inquiries in the township because somewhere on social media there was information put out that the Muse post office was going into um, a location in Muse um, into a building, the always safe building. That is not factually accurate. The, um, I had a conversation with Dave Wolf, who is in charge of this for the United States Postal Service. He is in active negotiations. They are back to the original plan to put it in the bottom of the volunteer fire company. Uh, they are in active negotiations and they are diligently working to make that plan happen. It's looking like that that is the direction that that is gonna go. So I didn't see it myself on social media, but we had a number of um, inquiries in the township about why we hadn't put that information out there. It's because it wasn't true. 
So just so that everybody's aware, it's looking right now like it's gonna go into the bottom of the volunteer fire company building, which is great for everyone because it gives our volunteers some additional income and puts a post office back in use. I will also say that Mr. Wolf was wonderful to speak with. Um, he said to me that he, he is, it is the top of his list to get a post office back in use. So for the residents of Muse. Can't hear you. I'm sorry. Speak into the mic. I'm sorry, for the top, for the residents of Muse, um, it is his top priority to get a post office back into Muse. So he is actively working on that. Um, we had a meeting with the PA Turnpike, we being Supervisor Savavik, Supervisor Fleer, myself, and our solicitor. Um, as I'm sure you're aware, we still are getting numerous complaints about dust and noise over there, even though we have an agreement with them. Um, I, as well as Supervisor Savavik and Supervisor Fleer, have taken trips over there ourselves to take videos and pictures so that we have proof. Um, they have provided us with a plan, which is basically to follow the agreement. I, I wanna say I believe them, but I would say at this point, actions speak louder than words. We have a follow-up call this coming Friday to see how things are going, but we plan to stay on top of it and, and hold them to um, what they told us, which is that they will keep dust to the site and that they will keep noise limited to 10, earlier than 10 p.m. Um, I know Supervisor Savavik and Supervisor Fleer have done a great job of providing proof, which is what we needed. Um, so we'll see, but we are not we are not rolling over for them. They need they need to hold up their end of the agreement. Um, any other questions about that? All right, before we go on to citizens' comments and before we go back to that, I want to take a brief executive session um, with our solicitor about something quickly, and then we will be right back. You're going to make a motion? Yeah. Hey, would that be? Okay. I apologize about that. We had an executive session to discuss attorney client privilege information. Um, we're going to go back to 87 2021 that was originally tabled to the end of the meeting. The resolution is consider the installation of a three way stop sign at the intersection of Rose Avenue and Kinsella Drive. Do I have a motion? I'll make that motion. Do I have a second? Second. Moved and seconded. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 It passes 5-0. Then I'm going to make a motion. Hold on, hold on. Okay. I was going to open public comment and then, or do you want to okay. do that now? Okay. Sending my vote to the no. Oh, I'm sorry, Eric. I thought you shook your head yes. 4-1. Eric voted no. Um, now I'm going to open um, citizens' general comments and questions. So if you have a comment or question you'd like to come to the microphone. Sorry, Tom, that was separate, so I figured you could do it after a public comment. Okay. Kenny Strain, Windsor Woods, 4022 Sir James Drive. My question to the board is I see a number of signs all over the township about saving the fire department what is that about is there some issue about fund not funding but uh, do they need uh, citizen participation for something that they want to do so those there... those signs are were not generated by the township or by any of the volunteer fire companies I didn't get up and look close at them, but I see them all over the place Oh. Those were not generated by the volunteer fire companies. If you look close enough, there is a person's name at the bottom of those signs. Oh, okay. The township, as, <coughs> as we have stated repeatedly to the volunteer fire companies, they understand. We've met with two of them. We have a meeting Wednesday with a third. Um, we intend to fund them at the same level that they have been funded at for the past, I forget when we changed it, five years ago, I think we changed it, to one mil per department. Uh, that will continue to be the same. They are satisfied. They are happy. Um, I can't speak to why those signs were put up, but I, I can tell you in speaking, we've spoken to Muse and Lawrence. We're going to see on Wednesday. They understand that. We intend to work with them. I think it came from 
um, the advertisement for a fire chief, which we are still working on that, hiring a fire chief, but hiring a fire chief is unrelated to their funding. The fire chief's salary will come out of the township general fund. Okay, thank you very much, because I, I just didn't understand. I thought maybe there was it's a possibly a consideration to consolidate no, some of the, or not build, an, build another one in another part of the township. I didn't know what. So, so we said this, we stated this, we meet with them once a month. At our last meeting, um, we made it very clear to them that if consolidation is something that they want to do for the three departments, they are more, we would support them in that. I can't speak to what will happen in the next three to five years, okay. well, but right I, now there is no plan to forced consolidation. Okay. And so again, I don't know where that came from. We have talked about putting a fourth fire station off of Klinger Road. Um, that is an area of the township that is underserved by the three existing fire companies because the location just takes time for them to get to South Point from their existing stations. Um, but our township is 27 square miles. So at no point would we eliminate any of the three existing fire companies. We, we need them, quite frankly. Yeah, well, I thought with all this development that's going on in the township that there was possibly a consideration to add another one sometime in the future. As long as they want to be there, we will welcome them with open arms. Okay, very good. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Take this down to talk. Yeah. All right, Kara Sheridan, 58 North Nepali. I just had a couple things. Um, I've been interacting with a lot of residents, and I had some questions. I just want to get verified, so I'm giving accurate information. So, uh, first, a number of people that I've talked to uh, have had concerns recently about uh, neighbors taking care of their yards, uh, dead trees, um, you know, cars, and and old campers and things like that on the property is the right thing for me to be telling them if they ask me personally to, to contact the code enforcement officer directly. Yep. That's the right course Call of Mike. action. Mike will go right out. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'll I'll get his information and make sure that I tell him that. Okay. Um, there was a question. I don't know if uh, they've ever brought up before in Georgetown Estates uh, intersection at Valley View in Lexington. Um, being any sort of a problem, uh, a couple people had brought up that it's only a two-way stop right now, that there's a lot of people running through and having near, near misses at that intersection. Has that come up before? It has, and a study was performed, and the analysis was there was no warrant for additional stop signs. Okay, very good. Thank you. Um, another thing is a paving of roads. That's probably a really common thing that comes up. I don't know, do we, do we um, at, at any point sort of tell people what our plans are, because I think people think, oh, well, this place is getting their road paved, and maybe, you know, we should have been higher in the queue, or they don't know if they're, you know, scheduled for coming years. I just don't know if there's anything that we publish other than when it's officially approved. So we work with Dan and Joe Sites to come up with a plan. Unfortunately, we can't tell people where the road is because things change on a yearly basis. Like things come up that we aren't planning for, for example, Kuma Road um, or other various things that need more urgent repair. But we do undergo with our township engineers undergo an analysis with our director of public works every year to stay within about a million dollar budget of paving and to do the roads that are most critical that year. Okay. So we do the best we can. And quite honestly, this is my ninth year on the board. We've made huge strides as far as stay, moving this, the pavement, uh, the paving um, progress forward it just takes time and there's a lot of roads a lot of square miles and a lot of roads that need significant repair and, and generally the list is made up by Frank and yep. Bill who go out and look at yep. the roads what condition they're in okay it's yep. not a matter of who goes before who it's right, like right. the worst roads so right. I, I do like that idea though and we brought it up maybe four years ago but it was to put all of the roads in Cecil Township on a 20-year plan and that way we would have, and it seems like that cycle, and then you just start over and start doing the roads all over again. So we had requested that, so I'd ask that the board think of that again, just that that might be something that we do. And then by all means, roads deteriorate quicker. They would move up on the list. They could go up or down. And some yeah. could go down. 
Dan, isn't that sort of what happens now, though? I mean, we are not because we played catch up there for a period, but they are cyclical in that, you know, if if it's just paved or recently paved, unless it's an emergent need for repair, it it just goes in that cycle. The problem is like this year we had two major bridges yeah, fail understood. that needed major repairs and major improvements. And so that hampered the amount of money that we could spend on paving. Okay. So we do try to do it. I, I, for most part, I think our roads are all pretty good. They've yeah, all, they've all been paved, haven't the they, Dan? Meeting, yeah. yeah. We're lucky to, I mean, we have our own paving um, guy on our board. So we rely a lot on Frank too, Frank and Bill to go out there and look at stuff. So I'd be curious after the meeting, if you wouldn't mind to just like tell us some of those two, two quick ones, just that I'd say where I heard it the most often was in Georgetown Estates. And then the one neighborhood that's off O'Hare and Muse Bishop on the right-hand side. Pristine Mark Fields. Wood pr Pristine we, Fields. We keep putting it off and off, but I think it's scheduled this year to do. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it is this right. year. So if you want to yeah. tell them. That yeah, I'll go through. Let me go through my list. I'll pull any more. But those were probably where I heard it the most. Um, Muse Post Office, if people ask, do we have any idea of timing? Yeah. Oh, um, he said hopefully by the end of the year. So okay. they just needed to work out a few more legal um, things, but it's looking promising. So okay. cool. And thank you to our new um, fire chief, Corey Wonderly, who's been awesome at working with the post office to make this happen. Um, and I know the, the other one that came up quite a few times was that Ridgewood um, Drive Bridge. Do we know what timing is on that? It, it's been put out to bid, so we will vote on it. We're advertising It's been for put it. out to bid, yeah, sorry. I went, so we will vote on it at our June meeting. And what do you think, like, if, if you decide to go forward by June, does, does the work start? I mean, are they, like, months behind? Uh, Kara, just address the board. There was you a little say bit it's going to take three months for the permit, probably, from the DEP? Public Works. Clean your road. Oh. We were delayed a little bit because of weather. We had to wait until we could get a better look at it to see what was really going on and what needed to be repaired. So that's what kind of pushed it a little bit. Okay. Last one, I promise. Um, the... Uh, that's good news about the COVID uh, funding. And I, one thing that perked my interest that I heard was you did say broadband. And I know that I've heard a lot of people, especially people with school-aged children that have had a lot of challenges over the last year that don't have access to broadband internet, myself included, um, but, but many others that have, have asked, is there something that the township can do? Could possibly there be additional work done with Comcast or others to kind of come up with some sort of an agreement to get some better pricing versus every individual going out and asking, like they gave me a quote that if I go ahead and pay them $14,000, I can get them to drive, put internet to my house in nine months. You know, is there a way, is there anything we could investigate there to see for those parts of the township that aren't served by broadband internet today if there's some kind of deal we could strike with, with them and maybe take advantage of some of that funding. I'm not asking for it to be fully subsidized, but I'm asking if it's something we could investigate. Yeah, for sure. That's it. Any other comments, Mr. Cronin? I don't think so. Tom Cronin from Philly Drive. Uh, uh, you might have noticed that when you come down, um, like if you're coming out of Cannonsburg and you, uh, you take a right onto Burnside Road, there's a sign there about, uh, about Cecil Township, the best township in the country. It's been up there about 10 years, and it's listed. It's starting to fade a little bit. And it's an obstruction for... Uh, 
if you're at the stop sign coming out of uh, Burnside Road and you want to turn left or right onto 980, it is an obstruction of the uh, southbound traffic on 980. So it, it might be due to you know, take that sign down. It, it's no longer, either, while that's an admirable you know, achievement, um, that was about 14 years ago now. <laughs> and, uh, let's, let's, let's work on the next one. You know. So uh, we can consider that. Um, another thing when you're talking about roads, yeah, I do agree with you, Dan. You, did, you guys did a nice job on the roads in the township. I used to bicycle um, years ago along all the roads in Mount Pleasant and uh, South Turbane, North Turbane, all around. Ours were the worst. And now uh, they're some of the best. So uh, we've made good, uh, good accomplishments on that. <clears throat> but now on the, um, <laughs> on the gate, here we are on the gate again. And uh, uh, where do we stand on the possibility of closing that road? Um, so we have been, we being Dan, has been negotiating with a property owner um, for a couple months now. As you can imagine, he's looking to sell his house, so his yeah. position is he wants the gate removed. Um, he's provided our board with a couple of solutions that, quite honestly, aren't, um, a, a majority of the board is not really interested in. So we um, want Dan to go back on our behalf and kind of have a discussion with him about what some other options were, will be. Supervisor Gizio suggested some things that we could definitely consider, Supervisor Sabavik did as well, um, to try to. I know it's not fast. I know that this is frustrating for you. And I know for a period of time, he cooperated, he had a key, and he cooperated and kept I it have, closed. I have much sympathy for his predicament. So do we. Yeah. So we're trying to balance your desire to keep that road closed, uh, his desire to get access to his own house. Right, right. Too far, right. You know? I don't mean you personally. I mean the, the petitioners, the people who want the road closed, um, his desire to have the gate open so that he can sell his home, and the board's desire to balance and figure out how to, to make it all happen. Um, we understand that you proposed various gate options. Um, I know it's not ideal, but I'm just asking if you could give us one more month to have Dan go back to him with some of these other suggestions we've come up with and see if we can come up with something that satisfies. Madam if, Chairman, I am ready to make a motion. I told you that at the executive session. You can make a motion if you want. Tom's ready to make a motion. I don't know if it'll pass or not, but I'm asking you, before Tom makes a drastic motion, I'm asking you, are you willing to give us one more month to try to come well, certainly, up? certainly, because nothing can happen Right. I, I recognize that the earliest closure possible is probably July. So, Tom, I would ask you to hold off on that one motion one more month and see if Dan can kind of lean on this property owner to come up with an agreement. Now, uh, well, that would have been a part of my motion. The, the motion would be to close the road and then uh, let the property owner uh, access his driveway however he wishes. Oh. He owns the driveway in, in his driveway access is into Cannesburg. If he wants to use that, let him. If he wants to put a new driveway to the Cecil portion, let him. And that would be my motion. But if um, I agree. but the point is, if uh, if Dan, you can talk to him. My motion would also include that you give him one more chance to say, look, if you, you agree to keep the gate closed every time you go through, if not, with it, then we're going to close it permanently. Hold on. Hang on. So I'll second. wait. I'll wait till next month. So, of that ultimate closure, which, which I wouldn't be in favor of just closing it and blocking him off. I, I, I got issues there with that. Too. Okay, so then we're not going to do that. So, but, so but just, is there a budget? Do you have a budget? No, because we don't, because we're just trying to come I mean, up. Do you have a level where you don't want to exceed? No, I don't think anybody, we want to come up with the best solution for everyone, the best solution for you, the best solution for the property owners, and the best solution for that. The, 
please understand that even though he cooperated with us, there is a concern that if we change the circumstances, so if we permanently block that road or we lock the gate with a a lock that he doesn't have access to, that he, ha he it constitutes a taking. It's a change in circumstances and constitutes. You want to change the circumstances. That's no, we would be. Well, you want to change the circumstances by leaving the gate open that he agreed to close. Well, in any case, yeah. we would end up in court, which honestly would just drag this process right, out right, even yeah. longer. So that's right, why I'm right, saying, right, like, yeah. give us one more month to try to let Dan lean on him and come up with a solution that would honestly get it done faster than if we end up back in court and have to argue in front of like a board of viewers or comment, please court or something, or comment with court. You or the, uh, the resident would be. Uh, acceptable to that situation with a parking lot type of gate there i honestly do, i can't answer that because i don't would you be i, I can't yeah, i can't answer because i don't like that is a conversation we need to have our township engineer look into and that's one of the things he's gonna do i don't want him to be put on the spot sorry to jump in give us give us some time comments and questions you know yeah i don't think you should process anything I think if he wants to configure a new driveway or gate, he can do that. That should well, be on him. Uh, you see, the, the, the thing is that he didn't break the situation. He was on a dead end street when uh, when that uh, when they opened up that Apple Hill, and then and th this uh, this body voted to uh, uh, allow them to connect. For clarification, it wasn't us. It wasn't any of us, that, except right. Tom. It, it but, absolutely was not any right, of you. Right. But since this board broke it, you have to fix it. And blocking him off. Wait, 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 wait. How, how did we break it? You we, allowed Apple Hill to plan. We didn't. He, he changed what he agreed to. Ron, we didn't. That was a board in 05. The board in 05 voted to uh, uh, connect Cecil Township with Cannonsburg. Without any plans or anything. Not true. I told you last week. No, no, she left. He did provide. I provided. You. And I can, I'll pass it I down. Yep. I'll, I'll make copies. And Wait, hold on. It's I need both my copies. I will. I'm giving you that and then this. So, uh, this is 05, and this is in 13. This is what they are. So, that, there's a good bit there. And I, unfortunately, I didn't copy all of it. No. And I'll make copies yeah. of those if you wish. Right. But you have access to both of these. Because I got those from Don, right, Don? Right. Yes. So, so to be clear, Mr. Cronin, you are not in favor of pro blocking his access to his driveway. Right. Correct. Okay. Now, I, I think that because he didn't create this situation. Right. He, he was living on the end of a dead end street. Right. When all of a sudden there was a 400 houses built. At the, uh, on his end of his dead end street. And this board in 05, which none of you were a part of, well, voted Tom. to connect it. Right. No, no uh, he wasn't. No, Tom was not there. He, no. There was, there was uh, three, uh, uh, in, in list two, and I forget who the other one was. Lily, Lily Coleman. And, pardon me? Jimmy Coleman. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, so we are we are working on it. We will keep you in the loop, and we will address it once and for all at hopefully at our June meeting. So no pressure, Dan, but we but just give us time. We're going to try to go back to him with some other solutions and some other considerations. Yeah, I, I hope you consider that. I, I hope you can budget like five. It would be like five thousand to put a gate like that. Maybe two thousand for the gate. And, uh, uh, you know, then we got to hook up electricity to somewhere. Right. But I don't see why we should bear the cost. It, the, the board broke it. They allowed the, they allowed the throughway. And then you disallowed it in 13. At the property owner's expense, though, to be or his agreement, though, to be fair. We didn't just put arbitrarily put a gate up. He oh, yeah, was I, somebody, yeah. he wanted that there you as know, well. At that time, he had children that played hockey in the street all the time. Right. He does not anymore. They're drivers. Right. So he has people opening the gate, closing the gate, need a place to park. 
I understand that completely. Right. That situation, you know, Cindy, would you want to have a gate in front of your property every time you, every time it's snowing, open the gate, close the gate? Yeah, yeah I hear you. It, it, um, when he had none of that before. Right. He had a perfect, he was the last house, and no one ever drove by him. No one. And now he has. Uh, but he bought a property which is accessing Cannonsburg Borough. No, and Surridge bought that property. Well, uh, he didn't do that. In the fifties, he, he bought it. He that bought way. the house. He bought it that way. But and I, it was and it was set up already. I know, but he bought a property that that driver was in the borough of Cannonsburg. Period. Uh, but but uh, it was in the borough of Cannonsburg, but there was no road there. Ann bought that off of Falcone, and she just sold him a lot, just a lot. And there was no other road there. In fact, we paved into Cannonsburg in the in the nineties or the eighties. I forget when our road was paved. But we paved all the way into Cannonsburg to give him access. And now you're gonna block him out? No, that's not fair. That's not fair. Yeah, the fair thing is to uh, uh, fix it another way. You know, I, I propose that gate because that gate only has to block one lane. And he pushes the button, it opens, he goes through. In the other lane, there is that knockdown post that a uh, fire truck could go through, a police car could go through. But a soccer mom and a guy going to work he ain't going to go through that because he knows he's breaking the law if he goes through that. So that's all it is. And it's not ugly anymore. What we have up there is those two great big barriers that you have in front of the, uh, uh, the walkways in front of the bridges. It's just a lot of traffic to one over those nice new bridges. Uh, <clears throat> you can remove those. And that single post will stop the traffic. And you'll have it's access. It's good with it. And it'll, it'll look good. It won't look bad. It's the game's going to work if we'll give it one last chance. Yep. To work something out. But I, but I think the threat of that is that it's out. So uh, uh, just one last thing. Uh, I think we have a, uh, an accomplished uh, sophomore in high school in our, uh, our uh, township. And that happens to be the chief's son, Ethan, was uh, just uh, got an honor. But what was the chief? It was Would he be willing to come to our June meeting so that we could recognize him? <laughs> could his dad lean on him a little bit to come? All right. We would love to, to recognize him. It's a huge accomplishment. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, you all know me, Linda Cronin. I just want to be a quiet person and not have to come up and say these things. But my... I need, uh, there's one question that I am I'm so I'm sorry, confused. it's raining so loud. Can you speak up? Just. I, yeah, I, I'm too short. To <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel you on that. I'm short. I have something that obstructs my moving forward. Uh, well, I can, I can understand that. And I'm short, so I appreciate it. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Can you hear me? Okay. Tom, in relationship to what you just said, my confusion is that when 2012, when we uh, notified Cannesburg that there is that the road at Rose is going to be permanently closed, and so we, you you voted on that, and Cindy voted on that, and three other uh, supervisors. My confusion is that that when we denied access to Cannonsburg Borough, we should did we not include the lot that <coughs> that the homeowner owns that pays taxes to Cannonsburg and has. And that's his access. Access. So, what is the dispute that we are trying to have a road close and jeopardizing our, our lives because we're trying to accommodate a Cannonsburg homeowner that pays taxes to Cannonsburg that we are trying to work and, and, and exactly like you said, should it be at our expense if we're trying to help him out? As Tom says, we do agree that there should be some way that he could do it. But he also has access to his driveway, going through like everybody else on the bottom of Rose Avenue does to get out in Hooks Lane. 
And there's also, from what I understand, five homeowners on the other side that are complaining and actually went to Cannonsburg Borough meeting and complained about that road being open. And they rejected that it wasn't their problem, which it isn't. <laughs> so that's my question. Why are we, when we denied access to Cannonsburg, why are we doing this? So I'm not trying to cause a marital dispute, but I think this is... We don't talk to each other about that. <laughs> so, like, I think what you're saying, though, is different. He's saying... Right. Okay, so I don't want to get in the middle... For people. Okay, I don't want to get in the middle. Mr. Cronin is saying that um, he understands the plight of I the homeowner. Too. You're saying that you think he should come out in Cannonsburg, but my response is still similar, which is give us a month to try to accommodate everyone, mm -hmm. to try to accommodate the homeowner so that he can go whichever direction he wants to accommodate you, which is that you want the road closed. I also heard from, and I think Don did too, from residents that live at the end of Hooks Lane that some of them would like them it to remain closed. Now on the opposite end, some of them want it open. So just give us a month. Because you did vote to close it. Right. And, and I still, as I was trying to explain to Mr. Cronin at the beginning, I still stand behind that. I just am trying not to get us in a legal battle that we may or may not win. I don't want it to go into the hands of the court. I want us and our township engineer and our township manager to negotiate with the property owner and try to come up with a settlement that everyone is happy with. But what happens if we do all this stuff and the new homeowner doesn't go by it. They will be required to abide by the agreement that is in place. It will be a disclosure as part of the selling of the house. Okay. So they will have to abide by whatever agreement the homeowner has already agreed to. Okay. And I do object to the stop signs. I understood. <laughs> I know he said he didn't, but I do. Okay. I did, I did. Yeah, yeah. Well, I heard Sorry, you I, hope you, I hope you're riding two separate cars. But we actually have two separate cars. <laughs> No, we've already had disputes at home about this with Ooh, our, sorry. our, not disputes, but our comments on each of them. Healthy arguments. But right. we do respect each other's opinion. Good to hear. Good to hear. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Tom, for trying to, to help us out, too, because I, I do like that motion if we can't come up with anything. I hope you're doing it. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Kevin Camerson, 15 Swahart Road. Um, last Friday, about 4 o'clock, um, Muse Bishop Road was probably covered with about a foot of mud around 4 o'clock. What was done with that well driller was doing maintenance on that road, on the property that drug out I didn't extensive even... mud on the road. It Go ahead, Very Sean. dangerous. How was he? He's trying to turn his microphone on to answer you. Can you hear me? Yeah. So Dawn notified us of the mud on the road. It was over the weekend, and by the time um, it everybody like Friday, up, yeah, started. Yes. Like Friday so we had an officer go up today while they were there and addressed it and advised them they have to make sure it's cleaned or they'll be fined. Yeah. So there's like no notifications or nothing when they cut in. I mean, it was it was bad. I mean, it was. There were, can't there be, was can't believe nobody else noticed it, Frank. You didn't notice it. I did. Yeah. There's no one there to tell Kevin. Dawn is like right, right up the road from your house. Yeah, there, there was no one on site. They were all gone. Oh, they were all gone. When I you, went up I know. It was like, to, it was pretty It's, sick. it's yeah. the uh, the company performing drill service on the um, on the well there on the Yego farm. Oh, okay. I, just, oh, I don't want to bring the name up. Sorry. No, I'm sorry. I asked. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, sorry about that. No, I didn't bring the name up. Sorry. Yeah, I mean, we'll keep on top of it. I wasn't even aware that it happened. Thank you for bringing it to our attention. Anybody else? All right, this meeting is adjourned.